Hello and welcome to Aldersgate Sunday service. The service today will be led by the Reverend Richard Lawson with contributions from Bushy and Oxy Methodist Church and from St Andrew's Methodist Church, Bushy Heath. In particular, I would also like to thank Ken Green for pulling all of this together. The Methodist Church homepage tells us that today as Methodists, we commemorate a life-changing moment in the Christian journey of John Wesley, the most prominent of the founders of Methodism. In May 1738, John unwillingly attended worship at a Moravian religious society meeting on Aldersgate Street in London. It was at this service that he felt his heart strangely warmed as he experienced God's love. Today in these strange times, we have an opportunity to reflect on our own personal relationship with God. As Reverend Barbara Glasson, President of the Methodist Church, describes in her own Aldersgate message, right now we cannot attend church, willingly or unwillingly. Our lives are challenging as we cannot easily meet or see fellow Christians unless using Zoom or video conference. Whilst great, it's not the same as seeing people in real life. We can, however, as Barbara says, use this as a time for prayer. Let us pray. A prayer for Aldersgate Sunday by the Reverend Dr. Martin Jenkins. Resourceful Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for your servants, John and Charles Wesley, that you fueled their zeal and tempered it with divine grace brought them through dark times, enlightened and renewed. That you warmed their needy hearts, assured and shaped them by your act of holiness, that through their willingness, you worked out your purpose of hope, mercy and justice. Somewhat daunted, we stand today in their deep footsteps, in a world of new challenges and old needs, in a time like no other. But undaunted, we humbly ask you to do in us what you did and in and through them. May we know both your infilling and outpouring that whatever our situation or condition, we will serve and honor Christ. And in these our days, know and believe that the best of all is God is with us. Amen.
Good morning everyone. The New Testament reading can be followed on page 47. It is Mark 12, 28 to 37. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is the one, and beside him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David, David himself? By the Holy Spirit declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. This is the word of the Lord. You know, the best kinds of days are the days that start off like any other day. And then something special or extraordinary happens. And you get to the end of that day and you think, wow, that was an amazing day. That was some day. The 24th of May, 1738, was one of those days for John Wesley. John wasn't in a good place. He'd just returned from America where he'd been for nearly two years. And things hadn't gone well there for John and Charles. John had dreams of converting the Native Americans. He thought the new colonies would love his preaching. It was a disaster for so many reasons. So he returned to England with brother Charles and he tried to make sense of this experience. You know, it's never easy when things don't work out. John was feeling down. He was living with his failings and with his doubts. Yet it was on his way to the new world that John's faith was shaped. It was during a life-threatening storm at sea that John was so impressed by a group of Germans, the Moravians, who also were bound for the new world. While everybody else panicked, their faith was unshakable. They remained calm, they prayed and they chanted psalms. They had something that John wanted. They had something that John was lacking. You know, John was a great diary writer. And on this day, nearly 300 years ago, he tells us that that morning he woke and he came across these words in his Bible. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. That evening, he went to St Paul's Cathedral for evensong. The anthem being sung was out of the deep I have called unto thee, O Lord, hear my voice. A despondent John was calling, but he felt as though his God had deserted him. He writes in his journal for that evening. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, 
I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. You know, it's good to see the human face of John Wesley, not that plaster saint. The John Wesley who struggles and questions and whose faith is shaken. A John Wesley who makes mistakes, who gets it wrong. But God still has a plan for him. God isn't finished with him yet. You know, it's when we're just clinging to our faith. It's in our questioning and our doubting. It's when nothing goes right and we feel like quitting, that we need to remember those words, those words that Wesley reflected upon this day. You are not far from the kingdom of God. God is in this. You know, when this chaos is over, we'll have a trip out. Let's go to London. We can do even song in St Paul's Cathedral. And we can stand near the spot where Wesley's heart was strangely warmed. And where Brother Charles, three days before, had a wonderful similar experience on Pentecost Sunday. Let's embrace our history. Let's get involved in our story. And let's follow Wesley's footsteps. Let's make it a date and we'll do it as soon as we can. In the city of London, in Aldersgate Street, on the 24th of May, 1738, at 8.45 in the evening, John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed. Reflect this week perhaps today, where you have felt that you've been in the presence of the living God? When and where have you felt your heart strangely warmed? When you felt that gentle touch of God, or being given that nudge, or even perhaps just a fleeting glimpse of something other? Where and when of our moments of encounter been. It was on this day, 282 years ago, that John's faith went in a new direction. It was no longer a mind thing, just going through the motions. Now it was about feelings. Now it was about the heart, a heart strangely warmed. A spark was ignited and the rest is history. Amen. Today's intercessions come from the VE Day service my mum attended in Chicago in 1945. The response is, hear us and use us, Lord. Almighty God, who taught us to make prayers and intercessions for all men, we pray this day for those who are hungry and without bread, for those made homeless by war, for separated families, for those whose loved ones have been ruthlessly slaughtered for orphan children, and for all those who have suffered under the heavy scourge of war. Hear us and use us, Lord. For all the men and women of our armed forces at home and throughout the world, for the sick and the wounded in hospitals, for doctors, nurses, and all those who care for the sick and the suffering, and for all those who are prisoners. Hear us and use us, Lord. For our beloved nation and all those whom we have placed in public authority, for our homes, our schools, 
and for all our institutions and organizations that serve our country's welfare. Hear us and use us, Lord. For the triumph of justice in every human relationship, for the enduring liberation of the oppressed, and for the lasting freedom of all thy children, hear us and use us, Lord. For the uprooting of all causes of war, for the ending of prejudice of race and nation, and for the confounding of all those who delight in war, and for the strengthening of the peacemakers, hear us and use us, Lord. O merciful Father, we beseech thee to send forth thy spirit into thy world for all the leaders of men everywhere, the rulers and the spokesmen of the nations. May they be instructed in the ways of peace, kept clean of pride and evil ambition, and so guided in all their doings, that they may make thy ways known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Amen. Join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be that I
Let us pray. Faithful God, who blessed your servants, John and Charles Wesley, by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. By the same Spirit, open our hearts to the gifts of your grace, that we may live in your praise and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us in this online act of worship. It's been good sharing together and it's great to feel connected in this way. In your prayers this week, I wonder if you could remember Pat. Pat is Nikki Green, soon to be mother-in-law. She's Pat's coming to terms with her recent diagnosis, not good. So we remember Pat, Nikki, Andy and family in our prayers. And also let's give some thought this week and, and pray for those in care homes, those known to us and, and those who care for them. The other thing, I'm wanting budding artists. So many people are passing our church notice boards at the moment, so we're going to use our notice boards as an art gallery. Each week there'll be a piece of art placed there inspired by the rainbow. The rainbow says thank you, but it's also the symbol of hope. So if you'd like to create something, A3 ideally or A4, use whatever you want, use paint, crayons, felt pens, collage, material, anything you want, get creative. We need plenty of budding artists, so if you'd like your art to appear there, just give me a shout. OK, I'll see you next week. Be safe and look after yourselves and keep hoping. Bye.